friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams. I hope that your month is going really well. I am back today for week two of my Christmas book exchange that I do with Amanda from The Curly Reader, Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, and Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. <laughs> I have today books three and four from each of them to open with you. If you missed last week, I will link it down in the description. Please go check it out. They did such a great job with the first two books and I'm really excited to see what books three and four hold for me. I'm so excited. So I'm just gonna jump right in. <laughs> I'm gonna start today with book three from Lindsay. Her little tag on this one says, I almost kept this one for myself. It's always a good sign right? That she wanted it. She liked it enough to want to keep it herself. Let's see what it is. Dun, dun, dun. A hardcover. Ooh, this is pretty. I've never, I've never seen that before. Isn't that beautiful? What the Moon Saw, a novel by Laura Rissau. Rissau? Rissau? That's really pretty cover. I've never heard of this. Clara Luna's name means clear moon in Spanish, but lately her head has felt anything but clear. One day a letter comes from Mexico written in Spanish. Dear Clara, we invite you to our house for the summer. We will wait for you on the day of the full moon in June at the Oaxa airport. Love your grandparents. She has never met, she's 14 years old. She's never met her grand, her father's parents. She knows he snuck over the border from Mexico as a teenager, but beyond that, she knows nothing about his childhood. So I have a feeling she's going to get to learn about her dad's family. That looks so interesting. Cool, Lindsay. I never heard of that. <laughs> Number four. I hope this book isn't a bore. You see the popcorn on here? I don't know if you can even see it. <laughs> there was popcorn all over Lindsay's box. Um, but then she says, I hope this book isn't a bore. I'm like, oh, that's not a great sign. But then she said, we should also buddy read it together. <laughs> Okay, I'm always down for a buddy read with Lindsay. Okay, let's see what this one is. The, <laughs> the Candid Life of Mina Dave, a novel by Namrata Patel. I never heard of that either. I love it. I love when you girls find books I've never heard of. The past has a pull she can no longer ignore. A woman embarks on an unexpected journey into her past in an engrossing novel about identity, family secrets, and rediscovering the need to belong. Mina is a photojournalist and a, and a nomad. She has no family, no permanent address, and no long-term attachments, preferring to observe the world at a distance through the lens of her camera. But her, her solitary life is turned upside down when she unexpectedly inherits an apartment in, an, in a Victorian brownstone in historic Back Bay, Boston. Oh, how fun. I've lived outside of Boston, not in the city, but I lived near there. So that's kind of fun that that's what takes place in Massachusetts. Love it. Thank you, Lindsay. Two books that I've never heard of before. Love. All right, Amanda's number three. Amanda's number three. Number three, not the graphic novel. What? Not the graphic novel, okay. So it's not, there is a graphic novel. Maybe I've read the graphic novel. Oh, how funny, The Amulet. <laughs> there is a graphic novel series called Amulet. The Amulet by Anne Bennett. The horrors of World War II echo down the, the decades, inspiring an epic journey to uncover devastating family secrets. Another one that I've never heard of, but look at that cover. I love it. From award-winning author Anne Bennett comes a new heartbreaking novel set in Singapore during World War II. Cool. After her mother's death, Lara discovers a beautiful amulet, amulet amongst her belongings engraved with the words for Surya. Suspecting Surya to be the grandmother she never met, Lara travels to Singapore to find out why her mother was committed to the care of a local orphanage during World War II. In 1941, Surya, a poor Malay girl working in a tailor shop and living in a communal warehouse, is befriended by a British officer, Charles Simons. Simmons. They start to grow close, close, but the war threatens to engulf Singapore and tear them apart. While delving into her grandmother's past, she is forced to confront betrayal and brutality as she learns some disturbing truths about families and friendships. I never heard of that. When did this come out? 2020. This was a 2020 release. Sweet. And then number four from Amanda says, World War II, a teacher's love for his student. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> that could be bad. <laughs> Let's see. I love a World War II novel. I know there are so many. It's potentially oversaturated market, but I'm still here for all of them. A View Across the Rooftops by Suzanne Kellerman. Kelman. Amsterdam, 1941. One man will risk everything to save a life. Sweet. I'm assuming it's a teacher. Would you risk your life to save just one person? 1941, Nazi occupied Amsterdam. Professor Joseph Held has never recovered from the loss of his beloved wife and has no intention of ever letting anyone new into his quiet, safe world. It's a world where the clock ticks steadily in his mathematics classroom where every equation has a solution. But then the Nazis come for the Jews and Mrs. Epstein is killed. And Joseph, in an impulsive act of courage, offers his student Michael Bloom a place to hide. Very cool. So a student is going to hide his, a teacher is going to hide his student. Another, I'm just amazed. This is like one of those buttery soft covers too. Very cool. Exciting, exciting. Okay. On to Sarah's books, two books. This one, number three says historical USA to London romance. So historical romance takes place in the United States and in London. Take out that tag. Let's see what it is. Dun, da, da, da. By Laura Spence Ash. Ooh, that looks pretty. Beyond that, the sea. A sweeping, tender-hearted love story introduces two families living through World War II on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean and the sky oh, of the Atlantic Ocean, and the shy, irresistible young woman who will call them both her own. As German bombs fall over London in 1940, working class parents Millie and Reginald Thompson make an impossible choice. They decide to send their 11-year-old daughter Beatrix to America, where they hope she will stay safe. Oof. I'm not going to read anymore. That sounds so good. <laughs> you guys know me really well. And then number four, Bookshop Family San Francisco. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, I love a book about books set in a bookshop. Best kind of a setting for a book. Contemporary, I'm assuming. Look at, I'm doing it nicely. Oh, the Lost and Found Bookshop. I do not own this one. I have wanted it, but I haven't read it. Very cool. I've, I think this is on my want to read list. In the wake of a shocking tragedy, Natalie Harper inherits a financially strapped bookshop in San Francisco. She also becomes the caretaker for her grandfather, Andrew. Grandpa Andrew has begun to struggle with memory loss and Natalie plans to close the bookstore and sell the building to pay for his care. There's only one problem. Her grandfather owns it outright and refuses to sell. Aw. So family dynamics, bookshop setting, love. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even sad about the large print edition. <laughs> I'm getting old, folks. I'm getting old. I love it. So girls... They did so good today. So from Sarah, I got a World War II kind of romance family story, Beyond That, The Sea, and a book about books, The Lost and Found Bookshop. Amanda sent me two World War II novels, A, a View Across the Rooftops and The Amulet, both of which sound amazing. And then Lindsay sent a contemporary, The Candid Life of Mina Dave, it has to do with photography, which I love, and then a middle grade that I've never heard of, What the Moon Saw. Yay, another rock star set of books from my girls. I love it. I'd love to hear from you if you have read any of these, if you think I'm gonna like any of them. I mean, I haven't heard of most of them. I think the only one I've heard of is The Lost and Found Bookshop. So all of them are new to me, which is really fun. Please go check out Sarah and Amanda and Lindsay's channels. I will have a link to them down in the description box. And if you missed last week, again, that will be in the description as well. I would love to chat with you down in the comments. I always love chatting with you down there. Um, thank you so much for, for watching and spending time with me today. And I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.